my name is Wolfram. I'm one of the guys behind DeepStream.io and I want to give you a quick overview over how to create data providers using DeepStream and how to integrate a feature called listening, which is one of the most powerful features DeepStream offers, but admittedly also one of the ones that is hardest to wrap your head around. All right, let's see the problem at hand. Say we're running our DeepStream server and we want to create an app that lets users receive real-time weather data. So what happens is a bunch of users connect to your app. One of them wants to see weather for Berlin, another one for Malmö, another one for another location on Earth. <coughs> now, we don't have that data ourselves. We use some third-party service, some API to get it from. Now, what we need to do to take the weather data out of that service and stream it to all our users is we need to create a process that sits in between the actual third-party API and the end clients. We tend to call these processes a provider, but as far as DeepStream is concerned, they're just another client that connects to it. This process sits here, listens to the API on one side, to DeepStream on the other side, and forwards data. And writing such a process is actually really, really simple. I'll quickly show you how that's done. Now, that's the client side. We connect to DeepStream, we request a record called weather-london, and all we do is log the temperature whenever we receive an update. Now, on the provider side, there's really not that much more to it. We again connect to DeepStream, we use a very, very basic um, imaginative weather API here that we pass a location to and it gives us back a temperature and sends updates to that temperature whenever that changes. And when we receive such an update, we stick it into the associated record. Now, this is already all it takes. If I run this, I start with a client, I get the current temperature and once I start the associated provider, I can see the associated updates coming in. Now, this is a really, really powerful concept in itself, but there is a very, very visible downside to it. Now, this is an approach that works really well for small deterministic data sets, but for something like weather, of course, it's really inefficient. There's a lot of locations around the globe and you don't want to be streaming all of them and all their associated weather data into DeepStream constantly. What you do want to do is you want to stream just the data that your clients are actually interested in. And for that, DeepStream has a concept called listening. It works as follows. Um, rather than just sticking a provider in here that continuously streams data, you subscribe to a pattern, right? So you want to be informed whenever someone's interested in uh, weather data, you subscribe to a pattern like that, that says uh, weather slash star. And a callback function will be evoked whenever a client either starts being interested in that given subject or stops being interested. Now, in code, this is where things start to get a little bit more complicated. We start off similar like last time. I'll quickly put that over here. We connect to DeepStream, but rather than providing data straight away, we use dsrecord.listen, provide the pattern, and whenever a subscription matches for the first time or the last client unsubscribes, this callback function is invoked. This callback function receives three arguments. The first one is the name of the actual record that matches that subscription. The second one is a Boolean indicating whether the first client starts being interested in that given subject or the last client stops being interested. And lastly, we have a response object. This object has two methods, accept and reject. This is where things get a little bit tricky. Once your backend process starts listening to something and provide data for it, it becomes what we call a provider. And providers have to actively tell DeepStream that they are now willing to provide the data for a given subject. 
This has a bunch of benefit. DStream asks these providers one by one in sequence, saying, hey, you have registered for that given pattern. Would you like to provide data for me? Thus allowing load balancing and failover between multiples of these providers. Every given provider can either accept a given uh, subscription or reject it. If we choose to accept, we then actually get the record and we keep a reference to the given record that we need in order to unsubscribe from it later again once we stop providing it. So I just create a map here of weather records and keep my reference in there. From here on it's very similar. Location itself is this time dynamically passed out of the record name simply by uh, replacing weather slash with nothing and is once again used in conjunction with the weather API to subscribe to the temperature. Now, the important bit here is once this method is invoked with unsubscribed is false, we cancel this temperature and we discard the associated record as well as remove it from the map. Using this pattern, it is now possible for us to create a simple load balance clusters of provider for any given topics that only spring into action once users or end clients are actually interested in said topics and immediately stop providing the given data set once the user stop being interested. That's allowing for way more effective and efficient use of backend resources. And that's really all there is to know about listening. Listening works for records and events as well and is one of the most powerful features within DeepStream's ecosystem. Cool. Thanks so much for listening and see you for the next tutorial. Yeah.